Welcome to Revival Time Hub, the fire shall ever be burning upon the altar, it shall never go out. According to the power, we're coming there, but it's important for you to know that God is all powerful. And you know, when, when I speak like this, I submit to you sincerely that the church has not really seen certain apostolic dimensions of the power of God. Our description of power has largely been limited to impartations, limited to financial provisions, and these things are not wrong. But you need to read the Bible to really see things that were not parables. They were manifestations of the power of this great God. Sometimes when I read the Bible, I, I wish it were a lie so that I just keep it through, but it was true. The things that were done before Jesus, the word incarnate arrived, and the things that were done through his hand as he walked upon the earth. What manner of man is this? That the winds and the waves obey him. You read the Bible, ladies and gentlemen, and see a display of God's power in a very fearful way. I've read my Bible and you want to read it poetically, go to the book of Psalms. My goodness, David did justice to our understanding. He plays with poetry as he paints all kinds of picture, frustrating your own belief as you read from chapter to chapter. God for you. There is nothing you cannot do. There's no bondage you cannot break. If you have said it, then you will do it. You have a track record of keeping your word. And you're not about to stop doing it now. Listen, let me pause for a moment and challenge someone. Don't be too used to pain. God is greater. Don't be too used to defeat, frustration. God is greater. Don't be too used to your condition. You know, pain can force you to a point where you build a theology to just keep you comfortable. And you say, you know what? I've exhausted all my options. One thing I know for sure is, yes, God is mighty, but your mind through pain can reject certain dimensions of God's power. That the day you hear a man of God say, in the name of Jesus, you know, doors open or whatever, your heart selects what to say amen to. Even though your mouth is shouting amen to everything, but in the realm of the spirit, you are literally cherry picking a few realities from the lens of your understanding of God. God is mighty, oh. he really is. Read your Bible and see a display of his power. I'm praying, I don't know, but it's a personal request. May God do one of those things he did in the Bible in our days. Just one, just one spectacular manifestation that can last us. We can literally hold on to that experience as a vehicle to drive our faith to a point of maturity where we can trust God. Hallelujah. I wonder what would happen if one of those patriarchs, one of those saints, I know that they will come if they were to suddenly appear in our world. They will be shocked at our technological advancement. They will be shocked at whatever, but they will also be shocked at our own belief. They will be shocked at the aircraft that a man can build metals and can carry him for hours from one side of the world to the other. They will be shocked at the fact that with one dial, you can make a call and someone at any end of the world can receive. They will be shocked. But one thing they will be shocked of too is our level of unbelief in the midst of evidences as so. Hallelujah. To him be the glory by the church. But before you talk of bringing God glory, you have to know that this him has an ability to do. There are men who have the ability to say, but they do not have the ability to do. They can say what they want to do. They can say what they wish to do, but they do not have the wherewithal to make it happen. Hallelujah. I've seen the power of God in my life. 
I've seen God heal me. I've seen God deliver me. I've seen God help me by His mercy. As I travel by His mercy from nation to nation, I've been exposed to a bit of His power. I've seen God do remarkable things in my life. And it has enhanced my faith. Let me tell you this. The faith problem or the faith issue was never supposed to be an endless lecture trying to prime people to prime people. The reason why we keep having to labor on people without them understanding is because we, there is scarceness in seeing the genuine apostolic power revealed. When we talk of power, if someone starts shouting up and down now, people say, ah, there's power in this place and you are right. But the kind of power we are talking about is this dimension that imports realities from a realm outside of this realm and brings them and makes it visible. 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 God. You see, but this Bible, read it all. Read it. Read it. Honestly. How does a prophet stand over a nation? Ladies and gentlemen, I don't mean to, in, to insult priesthood. But one prophet stood over a nation, not a parable, and said, by this time tomorrow, overturn the economy of a nation. And yet we tell ourselves we are priests after the Melchizedek order. And with all due respect, look at the economic situations. And yet we do not have the wherewithal. We have said by this time tomorrow, many times. And what happened tomorrow was not funny. Power for you. All by the same God, oh. All by the same God. That they kept the ark and kept Dagon and closed the door. No prayer warrior was praying there. Nobody was fasting. The ark was just kept there. Another demonic altar was kept there. Now you say the ark is inside you. And we are not seeing Dagon falling. I'm showing you power from scripture. The exceeding greatness of his power. I'm just sharing with you my contemplations. How do you put an ark and then you put Dagon and shut the door so there's no manipulation? By morning you come and find Dagon fallen face forward because everything bows. Everything bows, including inanimate things. And now today we claim that he's giving us power, authority. And yet if we are to be honest, the realm of the spirit does not seem to met out that level of respect for the average believer. Glory in the church. Not glory around creation. Ladies and gentlemen, if I stand before a sea, that wants to destroy a particular state in Nigeria and I command the water to reverse, not part, reverse by the same power Moses used. If it does happen, Jesus will not be glorified. I will be persecuted till I die. By what power did you tell a dam that is about to destroy a state and you stood claiming you are a priest? And yet many times we say we are greater than Moses. Be careful, though. <laughs> it was not a parable. Frail man, stammerer, but power. He stood in front of the Red Sea and straight be a man who had met God. He said, I have made you a God unto Pharaoh. Is that in your Bible? I'm showing you Paul's burden, Paul's prayer that every believer that wants to bring glory to God at this end time, you must understand the exceeding greatness of his power. Moses stood before the Red Sea in front of over 2.5 million people and parted the Red Sea. I don't know if you understand that miracle. An ocean part heater and teeter creates walls This is a God we serve. If I wear my shoe now as a Christian and my shoe does not fade, 
does not grow old and grows with my leg you will most likely call me a herbalist say no way it's impossible I'm, I'm just showing you the standard is the reason why it is so difficult to bet a little miracle and if that miracle does arrive we idolize that miracle but I believe that before Christ returns maybe not everybody but there are a few people that will press past this curtain and tear that veil and say Lord demonstrate your power oh come and manifest your power today oh come and manifest your power today oh God of signs and wonders Savior Redeemer come and manifest your power let me tell you this there were people who walked upon this our earth i tell you they they literally were men who were the, it was it was worthy to fear them these guys use words to change climates i don't know what kind of human being they were human beings they were imagine having that kind of power there are a few people here and there in our dispensation that demonstrated the power men like apostle babalola they stepped into you know archbishop benson idahosa and others that history did not do justice to capture them but you see i am personally tired of every talking about apostle babalola he's dead Archbishop Benson Idahosa, he is dead, but you are alive. You and the God that empowered him, he's alive forever. We talk a lot and sometimes we use it to just cut cheap points. Oh, once upon a time, Apostle Babalola, he matched a rock and an angel. There's the imprint that Mr. Man. If the Bible says Jesus Christ the same yesterday, what is the testimony of our own generation? You see, they captured dimensions of God and immortalized their impact. Even though they've gone, we cannot forget them because an imprint of their encounter remains upon the earth. This generation must also have something that our children will say, if you doubt that this, our fathers knew God, this is the evidence. They found him. They trapped a dimension of his power. I'm just imagining in my mind that suddenly Jesus were to appear here and then some of the patriarchs and imagine that Paul just collected the mic from me I'm not idolizing him you will be surprised my goodness Paul these were guys that will be preaching someone will fall and die they will raise the person up and continue the lecture power exceeding greatness of his power steps into a land and sees a damsel with the spirit of divination most of us will partner with the girl immediately making ministry easy but by discernment he said no something is wrong got that demon out immediately that you caught a man ladies and gentlemen now please don't feel offended but imagine that someone was kidnapped and physically angels came is that not what happened in acts chapter 12 came and picked him all the people were like dead men picked him walked away with him imagine that someone is missing and while you are praying he knocks the door and says i just came out of somewhere in nasarawa state who brought you out an angel you will most likely not believe we talk a lot about angels because we have not seen them some of us the day you see an angel you will cast the angel and pray that you will never come again I'm priming your hunger we need to press for more I'm telling you let's stop recycling shadows around ourselves the kind of end time ministry God is mandating that will bring him glory will have to be a display of power beyond shouting beyond falling down beyond rolling 
those things are elementary levels there are weightier dimensions where God sends a man to a family for two days as you step into that family everything literally what is wrong with this man cancer stage four I bring you life stand up immediately that someone will go to the hospitals I know we, 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 we chant it like a recitation and leave it there. You want to see God glorified? One genuine display of his power, I tell you, will bring more souls than many crusades combined. It is true. Listen, if the call of God is upon your life here, listen, don't be in a hurry to just jump into ministry. The bar has gone higher. That thing you think will bring members, you will waste your time. People are hungry, thirsty, desperate. They want to see the living God because other idols are now convincing them. They have gone to some idol somewhere. There is a hundred year old deity in the village somewhere. Even though you are telling them not to serve idols. But every time they are hungry, the idol gave them food. Now you are saying there is a God that is above them. They are saying show it all. Let there be a manifestation. Let there be a manifestation. My grandmother had children. They will say 25, 26 children as one woman because of her worship to that idol. And now you come carrying your Bible, your concordance, and you say, I am a new creation in Christ. My brother, demonstrate it. Before you are made a graduate, there is something called defense. Huh? So all your topics and all your learning, you sit before those who accredit you and they listen to you. While you speak and say all kinds of things, they ask you a few questions, then they say, okay, fine. Most of us, that interview you see, we have failed it again and again and again because you've not been able to bring defense to the name of the Lord. Come and manifest your power today, today. Come and manifest your power. Come and manifest your power. Hallelujah. Spectacular manifestations of his power. Spectacular manifestations of his glory. Do you know what happens when your word truly becomes like the word of God? That when you speak to people, they know it will come to pass. Because you told them that you come from his presence. When Zechariah doubted Gabriel, he said, I am Gabriel that stands in the presence of God. We like come from his presence with falsehood. It's an insult to his presence. You mean his presence could not judge falsehood and I arrived here with falsehood. I am Gabriel. If you don't respect me, respect where I'm coming from. I stand in the presence of God. Not everybody can stand in his presence. So I am Gabriel. I've been given access to stand in his presence. There is a purifying that his presence does. There is no guile in my lips. If I bring you a word, trust it. And most of us claim not just that we are standing in his presence. We say he is in us. But the truth is the results don't show. Can I lead you to cry in one minute? Father, let my life manifest your power. Let my life, let my life manifest your power. Not just shouting and falling down. Genuine manifestations of the God life released through me bringing many to salvation you are a transmuter of the benefits the benefits that are in God forgiveness healing deliverance honor prosperity through your life take a minute to pray 
Sapratiki beleke parato sati fresh. Prateke paranto skote brande ke bereto skalibras. In Jesus' name we pray.